Good afternoon, I'm Vashon Brown with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Reactions now to the changes to the cockpit contra boundaries and government's decision to abandon the Dry Harbor Mining Project. Mining Minister Robert Montague made the announcement in his sectoral presentation in the lower house last evening. However, the Jamaica Environment Trust Jet views the development as a small win as there are still lingering issues. O'Shane Masters has that report. It's been the case of lobbyists versus the government over two eco-gems, the Dry Harbor Mountain in St. Anne and the Cockpit Country in Trelawney, both areas also a miners' paradise. Addressing Parliament on Wednesday, Mining Minister Robert Montague announced changes to the boundaries covered by the Special Mining Lease, SML, in the vicinity of the Cockpit Country. We have modified SML 173. This change has resulted in approximately 6,000 hectares of land being removed from the original SML, but this will be replaced with additional lands to the company with SML 71. And SML 71 is adjacent to the east of where the company is currently mining in SML 165. I will take you there. By replacing what was removed, we have satisfied not only the provisions of the law, but the establishment agreement and the conditions of the license. For the Jamaica Environment Trust, this is but a small win. Obviously, we're very happy about the cockpit country decision and the potential impacts to the real winner watershed. But I, I, I would really have to see where are the new mining areas, you know, and, and who, who and what is going to be affected by that before I could really really celebrate, if you get what I mean. I also would like to know if, once these details are made clear, if the boundary for the Copper Country Protected Area is going to be amended to include this, this area that they say won't, still won't be mined in SML 173. She says JET will be using the Access to Information Act to get details on the proposed area which will be mined. The other thing, though, is the is the um, the cockpit country protected area, which we you know was declared in late 2017, and the ground truth thing I think has either just been completed or is almost completed. So if it's going to be expanded, then that means another set of ground truth thing, and we really would like to see this this area declared under law and start to have discussions on a buffer zone around it. As for the Dry Harbor Mountain Mining Project, the JET chairman says her organization is happy with the government's decision to abandon its plan to issue a quarrying license for the area. Minister Montague told the House of Representatives that the move was based on a directive from Prime Minister Andrew Holness. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Left for dead? The plight of scores of Jamaicans seeking renal dialysis at public facilities, but the waiting list for treatment is overwhelming. It's why opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Murray Sky, is proposing that the government expand the treatment options to save more lives. He was making his sectoral presentation to Parliament last evening. The opposition spokesman on health lamented the lengthy wait time for persons requiring dialysis treatment at public health facilities. He reasoned that in the case of the Kingston Public Hospital, which sees some 2,000 renal dialysis patients per year, persons have to wait for as much as four years to be added to the list for treatment. Many have died during this period waiting for acceptance into the program. At the University Hospital of the West Indies, it is around 6,000 patients per year, with another 1,000 waiting to be admitted in the program and their wait time is around two years. It is hard to say, Madam Speaker, but it needs to be said. But someone has to die for a space to be created. He says treatment facilities at the Cornwall Regional and Mandeville Hospitals are also overwhelmed. The minister in his presentation spoke to the expansion of Spanish Town Hospital and the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, which is commendable, but no, made no mention of any renal dialysis facility at either of those two. Madam Speaker, this is a serious oversight and needs immediate correction. Dr. Guy further pointed to the high cost of treatment at private facilities. What will happen to the thousands who cannot afford the $15,000 per session in the private sector? And that has to be performed twice weekly. Consider this, Madam Speaker. It would cost each, each patient about 
and $20,000 per month. How many persons over 60 years and living on a pension can afford it? It's why he's recommending the government improve and expand the dialysis treatment at public health facilities. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Minister Without Portfolio and the Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Edward Warmington, is coming under fire after a video surfaced showing him and the police in a confrontation. In it, he's on the phone apparently speaking with Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, complaining about being harassed by the police. Under first, this gentleman here had disrespect me inside the here. The first thing said, Molly, brother, me, me can't move it, I'm not the man, the man, I'm going to die in the world of Central America, he's a big friend. Go work with him. This is not politics, I'm not going to talk politics at all. Okay? I'm going to try it now. It's disrespectful. Me say, I'm going to call the minister, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to call him, I'm going to call you. If it's a video, when you talk, sign to him. But we can't call the minister to me, so I'm going to tell him, so he must, he must video me. Now, it's still unclear what led to the confrontation, but there are concerns about the manner in which Mr. Warmington addressed the police officers. It's now time for a break, but please stay with us. More local stories when we return. Welcome back, and we're continuing the news. Stakeholders in the education sector are blasting the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXE, over its decision to delay external exams by two weeks. Both the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, and the Caribbean Union of Teachers say the extension will make little to no difference for students. Sandy Williams reports. On Wednesday, the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, announced June 28 as the new date for external exams, which were originally scheduled for June 7. But stakeholders in the education sector in Jamaica and the Caribbean are expressing a disappointment. The Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, and the Caribbean Union of Teachers, CUT, argue that the two-week delay is in adequate and the timeline by itself as i've indicated is not the answer to solve all the problems it would have to be the timeline along with changes in the structures of the papers so we had recommended what should happen with paper one that possibly you need to have 90 questions and students to select 60 from or the rationalized topics that will be tested on paper two are uh, the the same topics that should be tested on paper one. In fact, quite a, quite a number of students are still disappointed based on our surveys because they were up and ready, mentally prepared, and, and want to get the examinations out of the way. Some of them say the two weeks will make some kind of a difference. But in and of itself, it would not address the, the, the major concerns that, that, that exist. President of JTA, Jasper Gabriel, says the changes to the structure of the exams would be more beneficial to students. Everybody was looking forward to um, the, the topics that are released to be more targeted, as well as adjustments to the structure in terms of paper one and paper two. And even if there was no extension given, um, along with these adjustments, it would have gone a far way in terms of allowing the examinations to be fair and more equitable for all our students. And the president of CUT, Dr. Garth Anderson, says the decision made by the examination body has raised questions about its leadership. I think what CXC would have demonstrated here is a lack of technical competence and leadership to pivot like other examination bodies would have done across the world. They have made themselves in an anomaly. CXC is an anomaly with what is happening across the world, giving normal examination in a normal time. Simply, they have taken decisions that are convenient to them and not in the best interest of our students. 
CXC has also extended the deadline for school-based assessments for CSEC and CAPE by over a month. CXC said markers will take into consideration the mental health of students when grading their papers. Sandy Williams, TVJ News.